this video, we're continuing with the add a tutor to the database use case. We've already written the HTML form that will gather the information from the user. And we've written a very basic version of the PHP script that will process that information and submit it to the database. But the problem is that right now we're accepting everything that the user enters as is. That presents several different issues. Uh, some, of which, some of which include database uh, or SQL injection attacks. We want to guard ourselves against those. Um, we also need to check and make sure that if a value is not entered, that we enter null into the database. So we need to make some changes to exactly how we process this data. Now, first name and last name were required fields in our form, or they should be. I guess we haven't decided what's required yet. So let's look in our database and see what should be required. So let's look at the columns in Tutor. First and last name are required, wage and Tutor ID, which is auto incremented, and active status, which has a default value. So the ones that we need to make required are wage and first and last name. So here I will Require a first name, require a last name, and require a wage. Now, let's save this. and come back to our PHP script. So this first name variable needs to not take exactly what the user entered, but we need to do what's called escaping the string to make sure that they haven't entered in any bad characters, and if they have, to try and fix it. So what I want to do is set this equal to my SQL real escape string with the connection con that we've already established and then the first name variable from post. And then I want to do the same thing for last name. So into the MySQL real escape string function, I pass the connection I want to escape for and then the strings that I want to escape. Now, for phone number, since that could be blank, I want to check for that. So if the length of my string, after I take away all the spaces, of tutor phone is zero, that means they didn't actually enter anything. So then my phone should be null. Don't forget your semicolons. Otherwise, my phone should just be the phone number that got entered. And I want to do exactly the same thing with email. So I'll copy this and then change what I need to change. If the string length of tutor email is zero, then email should be null. Otherwise, email should be 
what came out of the form. However, the telephone number is getting entered as a number, but the email is just a text box, so we should really escape this as well, just in case. So let's plug this into our escape string function as well. And for email, if it's blank, we submit null to the database. Otherwise, we submit the escaped string to the database. Now, we want to put quotes around the email if there's an email, but we don't want to put quotes around null because otherwise it will store the string null instead of the null value. So we want to actually put the, the single quotes in up here instead of in the query definition. So one way we can do that is by concatenating a single quote with this and then a single quote on the end. That will do what we need. So this email string, if an email address was typed in, will be single quote, the email address, end single quote. And that's what needs to go into my SQL query at the end. All right. So we have that taken care of. Wage should be taken care of in a similar way, except that it's going to be a number like tutor phone, not a string like uh, email address. And it actually is required, so we shouldn't need to check for a null value. Since we made it required in the HTML form, there's no chance of it getting submitted empty. So we can leave it as is for now. But class year... So to get the proper input for class year, I'm going to model this based on the email address. So I'll copy and paste it. If the class year is blank, I would set the class year variable to null. Otherwise, I will set the class year variable to be the post class year variable with single quotes around it. And so I no longer need the single quotes down here in the definition of query. So let's double check. We open our, our database connection. We verify that the connection has succeeded. We escape the first name string. We escape the last name string. Those will definitely exist because they were required in the form. We enter a null value if the phone number is blank, otherwise we store the phone number. We enter a null value for the email, unless there was an email entered, then we store that. Wage is required, so I can just store the wage. And the class year, if that's empty, we submit null, otherwise we submit the actual class year. We create our query, which goes first name, last name, phone number, email, wage, class year. First name, I didn't insert the quotes at the top, so I insert them here. Last name, no quotes at the top, so I put them in down here. Phone number is a number, so it never needs quotes. Email, I put the quotes in, except for the null value. Wage is a number, so it shouldn't need any quotes. Class year, I put the quotes in when needed, which they're not needed for the null, and they're not needed down here. I submit the query to the database check if there was an error in the database. If there was, report the error back to the user. If there was no error, it will tell me that a new tutor was successfully added to the database. And I need to remember to close my database connection. Then we're ready. So I will save this. And then we should be able to test it out. So I open the browser. 
and I should go to localhost slash new tutor dot html I will enter a fake name for the tutor with the phone number 111-222-3333, email address, wage, class year, and I will click submit. I have an error. Got a PHP parse error. My MySQL I close. And that is because I forgot my semicolon. So now if I save again, My new tutor was supposedly added to the database successfully. So let's see if it actually added to the database what we thought it would. Let's open it up. Use the tutoring database and select all from tutor. We see last name Yang, first name Christina, phone number, email, wage, tutor ID, class year, active status, added successfully. So this ad was successful. We should do some additional testing to make sure if I leave things null, it still works. So maybe I'll add in someone with no phone number and no email address. Now if I try to submit here, I've required hourly wage, so that's not going to work. So I'll enter in an hourly wage. And again, it says new tutor added successfully. So let's refresh the database. And I see Joe Schmo, null, null, 3050, zero, sophomore, looks great. So this appears to be working as we would expect. Final reminders, anytime that optional text is entered, if it's blank, we need to set that value equal to null. And anytime any text is entered by the user, so anywhere on this form, that you see a text box that allows for free typing. So all of these, I should be escaping those strings. And so we see that happening here. Now this will should require a number. We can also escape the string it, just to be safe. Um, certainly won't hurt anything. But it's imperative that you sit, you protect yourself against SQL injection attacks by escaping a string anytime someone can freely enter text into a form. The drop-down box does not allow for freely entered text, so I don't have to worry about escaping class here, but everything else I should be worried about. This concludes our example of inserting values into a database. We'll see in other examples just select and processing the select results or update, delete, verify that an update or delete has happened in further videos.